Hi Resurrection students, I'm Leah, one of your student ministry directors, and I am excited to explore more of God's creation with you. We've been talking recently about being made in God's image and what that looks like. If you recall, previously we talked about how everyone is created in God's image and how that ultimately means we belong to God and to one another. And today we're going to explore a little further into God's creation and what God meant when God called creation supremely good. So let's jump into Genesis. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things, wildlife, and that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them, male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give to you all the plants of the earth that yield seeds and all the trees whose fruit produce its seeds within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything he made. It was supremely good. I love how every time God creates something, light, air, water, earth, plants, animals, everything, God didn't just say what it was and that it existed. God actually saw it and says it is good. And not just good, but very good. In Hebrew, this usually indicates that what is created in, and what it is, it, it is functioning at the highest caliber. It is the best of the best. God sees everything, including us, and says it is super good, supremely good, the highest of quality. Have you ever been to the Rocky Mountains or the Grand Canyon maybe? Uh, perhaps you've been to the ocean or a beautiful waterfall. Have you ever looked out on a massive natural wonder and thought, whoa, this is amazing. This is the best of the best. I know I have. I've sat under a waterfall in Hawaii and thought, yes, this, this is very good. Dare I say, supremely good. God's creation is amazing. And it's not just here on Earth. There's a lot of talk lately about the new James Webb Space Telescope. I'm totally geeking out about it. Have you seen these pictures? I mean, wow. Here's a picture of a cartwheel galaxy that scientists say is 500 million light years away. This, too, is God's creation. And when God set all of this in motion, God designed it and us with a purpose. God saw his creation and said, this is very good. So what does that mean? Or maybe a better way to say it is, is it still true? After all, all we have to do is look outside the window to see that there are some pretty not good things about this world. And you know what? Not everything in God's creation seems good to me. I can see hurt and pain suffering and brokenness in this world. I see global warming or racism, division and wars. And a lot of times, I'll be honest, I look in the mirror and I doubt that there's good staring back at me in the reflection. And when God said what he made was good, God was affirming all of creation's design and intent. And that intent is to reflect and display the good character, the power, the love, and nature of our Creator. 
And even after brokenness came into our world, with its corrupting power and its influence, the fundamental goodness of creation remains. We say this word sin, brokenness, same thing. Sin might distort the goodness of creation, but it can't make what God has said untrue. Creation is still good in the hands of God, and it still serves its purpose of declaring God's goodness and love in the world. If God made creation and saw it was good and of the highest caliber and purpose, then we are a part of that good purpose. In fact, we are in charge of restoring wholeness and wellness to God's creation. God says it right there in Genesis. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. I now give to you all the plants of the earth that yield seeds and all the trees whose fruit produces seeds within it. These will be your food to all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes. Wow. God has entrusted us with all of this good creation. Humans have a responsibility to take care of the earth. And just like if you were taking care of a child, if they were sick, you would do something to nurture and care for that child. If the earth is suffering and sick, we can care for God's creation by being more aware of environmental needs and how we contribute to it. You know what, the earth isn't the only one who we should attend to. We should do the same for ourselves and for one another. God made us and saw that we are good. And when I look in the mirror, when you look in the mirror, the reflection coming back is God's creation made with a supremely good purpose. You are not a mistake. You make a difference. You are God's good creation. Repeat that to yourself every time you look in the mirror. What would happen if you dedicated time in each day to reflect on God's creation? See that it is good and do something to love the world around you. Whether you help grow a garden and, and learn about taking care of the environment or help recycle, Perhaps you could serve in a food pantry, letting everyone know that they too are God's supremely good creation. What ways can you recognize God's good creation and continue to take good care of it, including yourself?